Hey guys, welcome to another mini resource pack tutorial. Today, I want to talk about sub packs, which are a very nice way that you can add multiple settings to a resource pack without adding multiple different packs. You can have multiple settings within one pack, which the user can change at any time. Before I even get started, I should tell you that all the code you'll need is in the description of this video, and also this whole demonstration pack minus the panoramas is also available to download in the description so you can see exactly what's going on and just copy the code directly. Because believe me, you're going to want to use this feature in your pack. All the magic happens inside the manifest. It is these two new arrays you can add next to modules and header and format version. The first one is settings, which is less useful, and the more useful one is subpacks. Subpacks is an array with multiple objects. Each object represents one subpack, and you can add as many subpacks as you want, because you can add as many objects as you want. It'll just get harder and harder to select them because you are selecting, remember, on a tiny little bar. This is the exact same pack I'm just showing you the files from. So this is how this manifest ends up looking in game. So every time you add a new sub pack, it adds a new notch to this bar. So you can imagine if you added, say, a hundred sub packs, that would get pretty hard to select, especially for mobile players. Each sub pack has three different properties you need to apply. There is folder name, which is just which folder within the sub packs folder is your sub pack. So each folder within the sub pack folder is its own resource pack. Basically, let's take a quick detour here to explain how sub packs are formed. A sub pack is merged with the main resource pack before it gets applied in game. So that means that everything inside of the sub pack directory, so here we start in sub pack underscore one, say we select sub pack one, then that textures folder gets merged with this textures folder, and that applies to every folder in there, obviously. And if there is a file in both a sub pack and the main pack, the file in the sub pack will overwrite the main pack. So here we have a title in textures UI in the main pack. So this will apply for every sub pack unless a sub pack has another title file that will overwrite it. The second sub pack of this resource pack does have a file that overwrites it. It's a crappier version of the title made for an April Fool's joke. So when you select sub pack 2, the game essentially takes all the files in here, copies them, pastes them in the main folder, and clicks replace. That's exactly what the game is doing, so that's how you can imagine it. The name of the sub pack is just what is displayed on the bar when you hover over it. Sadly, you can't translate this, which is kind of a glaring flaw. Even though you can translate the name and the description of the pack, you can't translate the sub pack names. So don't even bother trying. There's also memory tier. This is not very useful unless you're making high resolution resource packs, but if you are, each memory tier adds a requirement of 256 more megabytes of RAM for your device to be able to use it. So for example, my computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM. So if I add a sub pack with 64 memory tier and 65 memory tier, I can choose to apply the 64 memory tier because 64 times a quarter of a gigabyte is 16 gigabytes, but 65 times a quarter of a gigabyte is more than 16 gigabytes, which is more RAM than my computer has, so it won't let me use this sub pack. If this happens to you, and you try to apply it anyway, the game reverts to sub pack 1, which is the bottom sub pack in your list. Personally, I never worry about memory tier. I trust my users to know what they're doing, so I just set all the memory tiers to 1, so everybody can use my packs. Finally, there's the settings array, which is applied on the same level as sub packs. Now, Rainvey ZCYF, aka Zhu Chenyanfei, discovered some amazing stuff with this. You can add all sorts of sliders and drop downs and toggles in the settings menu, but none of them do anything. So the only one that's actually useful and the only one I'm covering in this video is label because that's how you can add descriptions. Once again, you can't translate these labels for some reason, another oversight by the developers, but you can separate them by adding multiple labels to add multiple paragraphs. So here, this first description that starts with descriptions is controlled by the highest one in the list. I'm not going to review all the code for all this stuff because, again, I trust you to know how to copy code out of a file that you can download or out of the description of this video. I don't think you need me to walk you through all this. So, I'd just like to cover a few of the ways that I personally have used sub packs to great effect in my own creations. In my beta hider resource pack, you can choose between the newest panorama, which at the time I released this pack was 
only in the Snapshots of Java edition, or you could choose the Bedrock Edition release panorama, so you can choose the Caves and Cliffs Part 1 or Caves and Cliffs Part 2. In my Music Plus resource pack, I have various different ways players might want music to be played in-game. So if you want music to play with a complete mix, you can choose that sub-pack, or if you don't want it to play at all and just want to use the music player, you can choose that sub-pack. Or if you want only festive music because you're feeling very festive in March, then you can choose the festive sub-pack. In Java Aspect, I have two sub-packs, one for the Japa textures, aka the textures that were updated after Village and Pillage, or the Programmer Art textures, which are the old textures from 1.13 and earlier. And my last example, Glittery Glow Squids, because we're saving the best for last, is just a bunch of different ways you can have the glow squid display. The one that I picked for default is the one I prefer. It looks the coolest underwater, but do you want it to match Minecraft Earth? Boom, choose that sub pack. Do you want it to be slow but still have particles? Boom, choose that sub pack. The whole point of sub packs is to allow your pack users to choose and personalize how they use your stuff. Obviously, you can't create a sub pack to suit everyone's needs, but if you create just a few, you can cover a lot more of your user base than without. So, sub packs are pretty neat. I hope you were helped by this tutorial. I know this isn't like a full big produced tutorial or anything, and I didn't even have a script for this video, but I hope it helps you understand how to use sub packs in your own packs. So, we should see some cool creations come out of this. Enjoy!